Hey guys, this is Shane from Liberty Under Attack Radio. I'm not going to have a uh, an article edition of Adventures in Illinois Higher Education for you this week, um, partially because all of today was spent taking tests and quizzes. But uh, uh, luckily, my sociologist justice warrior teacher was. Uh, I, I mentioned in previous articles that it's far too easy to skip a sociology class because I just it's just hard to deal with the shit that is spewed in that class, especially the uh, the pro-communist, uh, pro-Marx uh, rhetoric that's uh, constantly spewed. So uh, yeah, I skipped a couple classes, and uh, luckily she's, she's 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 a good person. She doesn't want to offend. She doesn't want to uh, uh, she doesn't want to uh, I guess uh, negate the opportunities for other people. So uh, yeah, luckily she let, she gave me the opportunity to make up uh, the stuff, and I, I was printing out the the PowerPoint or printing out what she sent me so I could do the assignments and uh, yeah before I realized it uh, uh, yeah I was printing out this PowerPoint and I saw a couple things come through and I was like holy shit this is this is pure gold I've got to do a video on this so yeah I have I haven't uh, I guess vetted this stuff before so to speak I haven't seen all the stuff in this PowerPoint but you see a few of these things and it's like wow I, I, I've got to I've got to get on and talk about this so uh, that's what we're gonna do today and uh, this PowerPoint is called denial so uh, let's go ahead and move forward through this and uh, see what kind of stuff we can uh, we can uh, suss out from uh, from this PowerPoint. Okay, so how do we get off the hook for someone else's misery? And I'm assuming that's from the textbook that I didn't purchase because she said we didn't need it at the beginning of class. And I mean, why would I spend a hundred bucks? I don't have to spend. So yeah, how do we get off the hook for someone else's misery? Well, pretty simple. If you didn't cause it, then it's not really your fucking problem. So let's move forward, I guess. Deny and minimize. These aren't problems anymore. I'm not sure what these they're referring to, but uh, let's move forward. I don't see color. Well, it's kind of hard not to see color. I mean, obviously, I mean, continuing forward, we are post-racial. Um... Yeah, I mean, for me, I judge people off of their actions. I don't care if they're Jewish, Christian, black, white, purple, alien. I don't give a shit what they are. I judge people off of their actions. So, yeah, I definitely see color, but it doesn't factor into into uh, my judgment on the person. Women are equal to men now in the U.S., well, it's pretty similar, and uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, gender uh, pay gap has been debunked by Walter Block back in, I think it was 1981, so uh, if that's what's uh, being referred to here, then um, yeah, try again. Uh, everyone has access to the American dream if they work hard enough. Well, as George Carlin said, uh, the American it's called the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it, so uh, I'm not sure what they're referring to there. Um, probably referring to freedom or something along those lines, which is a myth, but uh, there are no gay people in my workplace, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah, some people don't have gay people in their workplace. So I have to they don't necessarily have to worry about gay, right, gay gays' rights, and uh, a lot of these people uh, have religious beliefs that uh, uh, make them uh, um, only tolerate gays, not accept them. So, yeah, I'm sure they're uh, we're gonna have to face, they're going to have to worry about that here soon, so... Um, if they don't already, from the Ober Obergefell versus a Hodges decision. Uh, moving forward, affirmative action. Oh, God damn it. Affirmative action. Just made it more difficult for whites and men. We are the victims now. Really? Really? That's the best you got? I don't feel like a victim. I mean, that's, that's victim mentality. I mean, I am a, I am white and a man, and I don't live off of the victim mentality. I, I, I live to uh, uh, make myself a better person and uh, make myself a, uh, um, I guess, a productive uh, member, not of society, but I, I, I try to uh, um, create uh, um, innovations that people want. So it's a voluntary exchange. I don't expect uh, charity. I don't expect uh, special treatment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. Promise you that. So let's move forward. We're only on slide number three right now, so let's see what else we can get through here. Blame the victim. Oh boy, here we go. She shouldn't have worn that outfit if she didn't want men to touch her. Well, first off, there's a couple of issues here. Uh, if a man's going to touch a woman because of the outfit she's wearing, then they obviously don't respect self-ownership. Um, so I'm not really sure what else there's to say about that. She asked for it. 
Now these start to sound like the rape culture arguments. If blacks work harder, if blacks worked harder, they would be more successful. Well, yeah, I'm sure that obviously factors into some blacks as it does with some whites. And as well as some Asians. Uh, yeah, if some of them worked harder, they would probably be more successful. Doesn't have to just do with blacks. But continuing forward, people with disabilities just don't want to work. Well, I can think of a couple of people in my classes now that are definitely um, um, disabled in, in, in ways where they are still attending class. Um, a lot of them want to be functioning members of society, so I mean, uh, um, I, I really don't know what they're trying to allude to here in this PowerPoint, but... Uh, I guess I missed the I missed the lecture, so I, I guess maybe I'm missing something here, but I'm sure you guys are missing it too. So let's continue for the next one. Call it something else. Battle of the sexes. Personality conflict. Now that's not really saying much. I have nothing to say on this slide. That doesn't really. Yeah, I I, I don't know what I don't know what they're alluding to here. It's better this way. People prefer things just the way they are. Change terrifies people. The butterfly effect. And opening Pandora's box. Well, first off, and, and, and from from previous from previous slides and also from class, I, I know what what they're what they're kind of referring to here uh, when it comes to people prefer things just the way they are, and change terrifies people. And this is referring to the uh, LGBT movement, and uh, probably also race too. But that's bullshit. That is complete bullshit. Uh, most people today, thanks to the social justice warrior movement, uh, if, if they're not religious, they openly accept um, the LGBT community. There's not a lot of discrimination um, in, in today's society. There really isn't. Uh, most people accept them with open arms, and if you look at these uh, fucking rallies going on in Chicago and other major cities, uh, yeah, they're pretty pretty accepted. There's not a whole lot of uh, discrimination going on. And change terrifies people? They're, what fucking change are you talking about? What what change? Obviously, not the change, well, maybe even the same, it's the same change Obama was promising, because it really wasn't anything different than what we've had before. So, I mean, I, I really don't know what, what the fuck these people are talking about uh, when they're... When they're uh, <clears throat> but in the end of these PowerPoints discussing these things. We're not done yet. We've got a few more slides. I'm one of the good ones. I have a black neighbor. I have a gay friend. I never owned... Okay, I've got, I've got to stop there for a second here. Before I move on to the I've never owned slaves thing. So do I have a black neighbor? I've got a couple. I've never talked to them. But that doesn't mean I'm racist. As I mentioned before, I judge people off their actions, not off their skin color. I have a gay friend. Um, let's see, do I have a gay friend? I really don't know if I do. I don't think I do. But I'm a libertarian, small L, not part of the Libertarian Party, uh, one that believes in the non-aggression principle and self-ownership. Um, so I don't really give a shit what people do with their own personal lives. They want to go bang a dude in their fucking bedroom. I don't care what the hell they do with their lives. It's nothing to do with me. I'm just against the politicization and, uh, and and their willingness to use state violence against me um, for not accepting them. I will tolerate them, but I will not accept them. Now, this this golden one that uh, for propagating class before, I never owned slaves. Yeah, I haven't. I'm not going to take responsibility for people 200 years ago. I'm not going to. I mean, yeah, they may have been white too, but I, I don't have white guilt. I'm sorry, I, I don't have white guilt. I never owned fucking slaves. I never enslaved anybody. I respect people for, for as, as human beings. I live by the non-aggression principle and self-ownership. So, no, I never owned fucking slaves. I'm not going to fall into your fucking white guilt. Okay? Jesus Christ. I may be white, but I worked hard for all I have. I may be black too, and I may have still worked for all that I have, all, the, all that I had. I may be Asian, and I worked hard for all that I have. What the hell are they trying to allude to here? Is it some anti-capitalist argument? Which wouldn't surprise me, because I've heard those about every single class period so far. Uh, 
So what? Yeah, I mean, isn't that what, what, what you're supposed to do? Work for what you want? Like, actually, no, never mind. You aren't supposed to work for what you're in because these people are advocates of the welfare state. So, uh, yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter how hard you work for anything because uh, you yeah, got to redistribute that wealth. Got to redistribute that wealth. I don't belong to any type of hate group. Yeah, most people don't nowadays. The shit that you're talking about hasn't been around for 20 years. Yeah, there may be the fringe groups, but uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, the KKK and groups like that are pretty much done. They're pretty much dead. They're, yeah, there are neo-Nazi groups, I, I won't deny that, but they're very, very fringe, and there's not many of them. Next one, I don't use racial slurs to tell racist jokes. Okay, and I, I may say a joke or two here or there. I'm not funny, so I don't say much. But, uh, like I said, I don't care what uh, skin color people belong to or what, uh, what, what color of skin they have. Really don't. I judge them off their actions. So, still not feeling any white guilt. Sorry, guys. Not feeling any white guilt. Let's continue. This should be the last slide. Last two. Sick and tired. Why do we always have to talk about race? Every day. Always in the media, every hour and every minute. Can't we talk about something really important? I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of annoyed by uh, by these race baiters, these Black Lives Matter people. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm kind of sick of these social justice warriors too, uh, because I, I can see through the I can see through the plan. It's divide and conquer. If you uh, keep people segregated uh, based off of race and uh, uh, things of that nature. And yeah, it's uh, very easy to rule over people. So uh, yeah, I am sick and tired of hearing about that shit, but it's not because I, I'm a racist piece of shit. It's because I care about freedom. And uh, yeah, divide and conquer is a uh, very, very well-known tool used by uh, authoritarians uh, to uh, gain control and to keep control and to uh, continue control. So um, yeah. So yeah, I am sick of it. But let's move forward to this final slide here, and then we'll conclude. Okay, let's see. Getting off the hook by getting on. Getting off the hook by getting on. So I'm assuming they want us to adopt these things that are on the slide. So let's see. Taking on the burden of privilege. Really? So so, so one of the things we're advocating for is 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 to to actually feel this this privilege. Probably because I'm white. Because I've been so terrible at people in my entire life, and you know I was responsible for for those uh, for those uh, racist authoritarian uh, founding fathers that owned slaves. No, fuck no. Uh, belong to groups that help less dominant groups. So in order to uh, not feel white guilt, uh, I have to take on. I have to accept privilege, my my white male privilege, and I have to belong to groups that help less dominant groups so I've got to subjugate myself I guess is is what they're kind of wanting me to do which I mean as I mentioned before less dominant groups I, I mean I, I I don't really believe in that shit last bullet point make ourselves feel less guilty well there's a lot of a lot of collective collectivization going on here make ourselves feel less guilty well I mean as any human being has done bad things in their lives. Um, I definitely have. But they haven't been because of race or because of my dominant status in society. Nothing like that. So yeah, I mean, this is, this is, what, this is what I'm dealing with in this sociology class. I've written about it before in, in, in various editions of Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. But now you can you can kind of see firsthand, uh, you, you you can kind of see firsthand of, of, of the type of things that are that are spewed in this class, <clears throat> all the way from I mean white guilt to privilege, um, t all the way up to irrational conclusions about the American dream. Uh, the victim mentality is heavily heavily pushed, uh, because I mean if you're a victim you can get uh, special privileges from the state. And, uh, 
that means that you can use initiatory force against others to to uh, um, to elevate your status in society. But apparently, for us that uh, judge people based off their actions, uh, we're the pieces of shit in society for not just accepting these people with open arms and not believing their bullshit. All of the lies and rhetoric that they've spewed for, for years now. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely getting ramped up now uh, when you look at the gender-neutral pronouns and stuff. But uh, yeah, this, this is truly, truly fucking ridiculous. It's definitely ridiculous. I know I, I, I've, I've definitely gotten pissed off in articles before, but um, you're seeing some of this. Uh, you're seeing this stuff for the, the, the first time just as I am. Uh, as, like I said, I saw a couple of these uh, come out of the uh, printer, and uh, I knew that there was, uh, there was a place for a video for this. So yeah, this is the newest edition of Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. And uh, you're seeing the screen share right now um, as, uh, um, for the first time, as am I. So uh, yeah, yeah you, now you know firsthand um, the material that's being pushed in these uh, college classrooms. And it's uh, truly, truly, truly fucking despicable. And it is the complete embodiment of the social justice warrior narrative. And yeah, I will say, if, if, if this was just some online movement, as I said in, the, in one of my previous uh, editions of AIHE, but yeah, if this was just some online moon, it'd be a different story. But this shit is being pushed in higher level indoctrination on, all across college campuses. And uh, uh, yeah, I will side with Christopher Cantwell on this point. And that is... Um, the fact that... They're kind of denying uh, all basic science here, uh, all, all basic science. Um, the survival of the human race depends on reproduction, and uh, and, and these uh, anti-science motherfuckers, these anti-rational, uh, uh, anti-rational uh, and logical people, um, yeah, they're they're definitely against uh, in science and everything that it embodies. I mean, most basic basic science you need reproduction for a race to survive. So. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely a dangerous uh, dangerous thing uh, that's that's being messed with here in America, but uh, it's uh, exactly what you would expect from cultural Marxists, and uh, exactly what you'd expect to be pushed by uh, um, folks like Hillary Clinton. So that is the newest edition of Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. Uh, it's the first video edition I've done of it, but uh, I feel this would be best so you guys get a first hand view of uh, exactly what the hell. Uh, that I am seeing and witnessing uh, in this class. I guess the benefit that you guys have is this one doesn't praise uh, Karl Marx or communism. So I guess good for you guys. Good for you. You got one of the better ones. So <laughs> like I said, this is Shane from Liberty Under Attack Radio. And this is the newest edition of Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. I hope you didn't enjoy it because it's truly despicable. But I hope you enjoyed the video as far as entertainment value goes. So, uh, yeah, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, uh, make sure to check out the website, libertyunderattack.com, and tune in live every Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. This week we'll be discussing... Uh, what are we going to be discussing? Uh, law, <laughs> law and uh, punishment in, anar anar in an anarchist society, as well as uh, Ray Ronald Reagan's economics. And uh, we'll take a look at Mises Boot Camp number two, which uh, is with Lucas Engelhart. And we'll discuss markets and prices. Uh, things that apparently these people have no idea what they actually are. So, uh, nonetheless, uh, libertyunderattack.com, and uh, we'll see you this Sunday at uh, fprnradio.com at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is Shane from Liberty Under Attack Radio, signing out.